lot of our our, our a lot of our cars and, 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 and Hendrick uh, as far as how the cars drove and how much handling was a, was important to, to being competitive. So uh, everybody was scrambling in the race, working on the balance, trying to get the cars to turn and do everything they needed to do because uh, we hadn't had to worry about it before. So it's starting to crop up a little bit. You used to be able to uh, get a good read on where you were when they ran the uh, qualifier duels during the day, uh, but that's not the case anymore. So we don't really have an idea at all what the cars are going to do till till the 500 comes around. But this will be a little bit different because of the night race. Even though the temperatures will be up, uh, the night will provide a little stability, mm -hmm. and the cars mm -hmm. will. Uh, the handling issues won't be quite as severe if there are any, but uh, the cars tend to t be a little freer maybe or turn a little better at night versus during the day. So uh, I think we'll still see some handling uh, be a part of it, especially when we're all very close mm -hmm. together. When you get around, you know, when you're behind guys and you're really close mm -hmm. tight, tight side to side on each other's doors, which is which is what we have to do with the package because we're side drafting so much more today uh, than we used to. Um, when you're around there in those tight boxes with cars all around, the air, the air on your car, uh, the downforce on your car is so little that, that um, you can spin out or get tight very, very easily and, and uh, you have to be very careful. So that's becoming a, an issue which is good. Uh, we Loved when this place was slick and bumpy. I mean, the bumps were getting kind of severe in some spots, and that asphalt was coming up in some places. But that that was a great challenge, and that 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 gave the crews and the crew chiefs a challenge to get the cars to drive well and handle well. And guys, everybody would haul butt for five laps, ten laps, and then by lap twenty, you start to see the cars that were handling move toward the front. And, and you know, it was great. It was a lot of fun. Um, so I'm excited that the track sort of in that way. Not as fast as we'd like, obviously, but the, the technology these days with the asphalt they put down is so much more uh, impressive than what they had in the 90s and the 80s. So these tracks are certainly not aging as fast as they used to. Greg Engel, examiner.com. Um, going back to, to Claire B. Lang's point and talking about the council, you were talking about pit road last week before the command. What would you tell a new fan or, or your fan or any fan, any NASCAR fan who's coming to a race, when's the best time to approach you and when's when's the time that not to approach you? And as a quick follow-up, um, mm -hmm. I'm from Orlando and obviously we live, you know, you're close here to Orlando. You're running the, uh, the Orlando United stickers this weekend and, and could you talk about that? Thanks. Yeah, it was a terrible tragedy. I'm um, glad that the sports uh, got the stickers on all the cars. Uh, I think it's a great way for us to show our support. Um, I don't, there, it's not really about when, it's not really about when, when, you know, when to be approached by a fan. Um, as long as I've been around the sport, it's just an open policy. You see a driver, you walk up and ask for autograph, you want one. Um, I think though what we want or what the drivers are concerned about is just a more defined um, area around the cars so that uh, our guys can get in there and, and effectively get the tire pressures right and get the cars ready to go and, um, and there's like I said there's some tracks that are doing a really good job of that I just for whatever reason they when we come uh, down pit road in the trucks to get to the cars, mm -hmm. it, it was just there was no definition on where people needed to be, uh, what would you know, create some lanes of access for the, even the trucks to get down through there, uh, and us to be able to get our cars and stuff. So, um, mm -hmm. generally, overall, though, the weekend, what's the best time and not the best time? I think the best time I'm going to be, uh, the best time to find me is when they're in practice, when I'm around the car. Uh, and I'm in the, you know, I, I'm i going to come out of the hauler and get in the car at about 10 minutes before practice. That's a great time. Uh, I'm going to get out of the car after practice and go to the hauler. That's going to be a good time. Uh, I'm going to go sit in the hauler in between all that. 
So I'm in, I'm in that holler all day. Uh, I don't really come outside the holler much other than to get to the car. So uh, those are good times. Uh, I walk in between. I walk to the bus after practice mm -hmm. or before practice. That's a good time. That's usually about 30 minutes, 30 minutes before practice. Uh, I don't know. Not every driver is the same. You know, some drivers get here sooner. Uh, some guys maybe not as uh, on time. I used to cut. I, I can't even believe it. Thinking about it now, but when I drove with Tony Jr. and Tony Senior, I used to show up five minutes late to practice. <laughs> I can't even imagine how I had, you know keeping a job doing that these days. But, <laughs> well, we keep it on time. We'll go next to the Holly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Holly Kane, NASCAR.com. This kind of goes back to something that you said earlier, and, and I think with restrictor plate racing, some people really like them and some people really don't. And I would think that you are okay with them at the very least. Is there something to be said for that, especially, you know, when they come here, you might feel like this could very well be the way that you get into the chase, and other people are like, I don't even want to be here, much yeah. less think about it. Yeah, I think that some drivers feel the feel the way I do about road course racing, about plate racing. They just don't want to do it, don't like it. Uh, I definitely come in here thinking this is a great opportunity to win a race. I've won 17 plate races out of my career, I think, something like that. Um, maybe it's 10, six, six at Dega and four here. So um, I won 17 races here, counting 125s and races and all that but so this is a group this is a great place for me to get a win so I got to come in there with that kind of confidence but I know there's races where I've gotten out and just don't understand why this you know why we have this kind of racing why do we have this, why is the why is the package like this does it have to be this way do we got to run three wide and crash on the last lap it seemed like I mean when we had the car tomorrow we wrecked on the last lap of the Talladega races every damn time we went there. And it gets so frustrating because if you weren't first or third or fifth, you were wrecking. You were going to wreck. And, and for the longest time, it was hard to understand that we're going to go to the racetrack and odds are we're going to crash. I'm going to work all weekend, bust my ass all day long, lap after lap after lap in the race. And I'm probably gonna wreck. So that was hard to wrap your brain around that this was hey, this is life, or this was okay. <laughs> and uh, nobody thought it was weird, but for the longest time, that's the way it was. Uh, these cars, you know, they crash and we crash, but it doesn't seem like it's every single race, you know, at the end, but. It's still frustrating when you seem like you can't avoid it, um, and there was a real there was a string there from like oh seven to two thousand twelve. Like you couldn't avoid it; you just couldn't figure out what you needed to do to not be in it. And uh, so it got real frustrating there at one point. But uh, they changed that. You know, we got rid of the tandem; that was no good. Um, and the racing, to me, has steered in a, a little better direction, something similar to what we had around 2001. And um, we still crash. Uh, we don't want to flip, but um, it's not as frustrating as it used to be. And, and I and I do enjoy when 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 you get out there and you're doing everything right, and everything seems to be it seems to be like you're you're in a zone. That's a fun time, and that's a good that's a, that's a good time. When your guys, uh, when you go out there and you run and you come back in, and your guys go, man, I can't believe you made that move. I mean, it's fun to go out there and, 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 and do stuff. But um, it is it was rough there for a while, but it's definitely, I think this, this car and um, the changes we've made to get away from some of the things that we didn't like about play racing there for a while has, has improved. Well, Dale, really appreciate you taking the time today. Good luck this weekend. All right, have a good weekend.